we come across an agency that is advertising for fashion designers and their website looks like this. On the other hand, we come across a different agency and their website looks like this. The question is, which agency based on their website would fashion designers pick? Now the answer is very obvious to me. The problem is that I see a lot of high level websites. I would even say 90% of high level websites out there look like the first one that I show you. If you take a look at the first website right here, they're advertising for websites, but their own website doesn't even look that good. On the other hand, if we take a look at this website right here, we see that it looks professional, it looks high end, it looks premium. It seems that these guys actually know what they're doing and they can actually design websites websites for a fashion designer. So today I'm going to show you a few things that you can do to take your websites to the next level, stand out from the competition and any other high level websites out there. My name is Rico and I run a high level web design agency and I help business owners and SaaS printers that run on high level get better websites that get them more clients. Let's jump into my computer and I'll show you the whole process. If you follow the step by step tutorial that I'm going to show you right now, you'll be able to take your current websites that look like this that don't get you any clients and turn them into something like this it definitely catches the attention of your potential prospects and overall just makes you a better go high level designer this button is very distracting second of all there's just too much going on on a first glance this yellow right here is very hard to read the alternative would be right here very minimalistic you see that there's this cool grading there's a lot more contrast as well and you see how the button is a lot more interactive as i scroll down and up well you see that the logo stays overlaid on top of the website as opposed to having it be a separate header. Okay, so we are on our website editor and the current website of yours might look just like this. The first thing that I want to get rid of is this effect. It's very annoying in my opinion and I see a lot of people doing it. So I'm going to click here, go to advanced. And I'm going to get rid of that effect. I'm going to hit no effect. I want to get rid of this white in the background and I want to make it black just because I want to convey my brand as more high end. So let's say you're using colors that are a little bit too bright or like there's just a lot going on. You can play around with your color palettes and a cool website that I like to use is colors.co. So you can select different colors. You can select what works with your brand. You can see how it compares to other colors. So if you're using RGB, you can get the RGB values like here, or if you're using hex, you can just get the values like this. Something cool is if you hit the space bar, you get different color palettes. So if you're feeling uninspired, you can literally hit space and it'll give you colors that work well. So very, very good for web design. Going back to the website editor, take this background and change into black. The problem now is that the colors are not working too well. For the main color, I'm going to click here and do white. So it's just a lot easier to read. I'll show you how to do the gradient so that it looks like this in just a sec. But now let's do some of the other stuff first. I'm going to click this button right here and change the color to white and the text to black. Maybe even what I want to do right now actually is make it so that it matches this side of the screen like this. So I'll click this here as well. And I'll make sure that I add some padding on the side. So I'll do like 20 and then I'll hit save. The next thing that I want to do is I want to get rid of this purple at the top. So I'll do the same thing to black. Even though we have only done a few things, the website is already looking a lot cleaner, a lot more minimalistic and a lot more high end. So you're already distinguishing yourself from other high level designers out there. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add this cool effect that when I hover my mouse, the button changes color and it's a little bit more interactive, something that not a lot of people may know how to do. So I'll go back here and I'm going to click on the button right here. And what I'll do is I'll click this custom CSS. And I have this notion doc with all of my resources for high level web design. I have examples, tutorials. I'm going to click on this one right now and I'm going to copy a piece of code that I want for this specific button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this even as a new page. So you don't have to change any of this. You can just have it even more simplified. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to make it so that when I hover my mouse over that button, the background is going to change to black and the text is going to change to white. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a transition of 0.3 seconds. And for now, I'm going to get rid of all of this and also add the transition as you hover out of the button, but make it a little bit more slow. And you'll see what I mean in just a sec. So I'm going to click save. Right now, the effect doesn't work because we need to click on the button, go to advanced. 
And then on the custom class, we'll give the same name that we named it as. I'll do pull button one, click enter. And now you see that as I hover my mouse, the button changes. Something that I need to change is that I need to add borders so that there's still a border when I hover my mouse on it. No worries, very easy to do. Here in advanced, you can go to border, full border, and then for the border color, I'll select white. And then you see now that as I hover my mouse, there is that border so the user knows that the button's still there and they know where to click. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that it's full screen. It's a layout that works very nice because it's a lot more minimalistic. Let's go back here. I'm going to click this section right here and I'm going to click this right here. So now you see that the elements, rows and columns now take the full width of the section. We want to get rid of the padding on the sides as well. So I'll click here. And if there's any padding, I just want it to be zero. And the reason why is that so there's no border here, you see. So I'll just do that uh, for the other side as well. Now, another trick that I want to show you is that I've seen a lot of guys just use the same font size when building their website for headers, subheaders, and whatnot. A trick is to use different font sizes to emphasize different things and just make it a lot more dynamic and not as boring. So let me just do that right now. What I'll do is I'll duplicate this text right here. I'll delete this. And I'll get rid of this as well. I want to emphasize that I help fashion designers. So I'm going to make that bigger. So I'll just click here. So let's do uh, 72. And this text right here, I'll make it a bit smaller. Let's do 30. So it's starting to look better. One thing that I want to show you is how to add this header and make it be part of the section right here. So I'll just scroll down or up. The header will still be there. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the row where the header is housed in and I'm going to move it to this section right here. So now it's part of the second section. So I'll click this right here, go to advanced, copy the CSS selector, go here. I'm going to paste a piece of code that is included on my Notion doc as well. So let me just do that very quickly. And now you see that we're getting closer. There's still some black space right here. So if I click on this section, I see that there's a padding of 20. So let me just get rid of it, zero. So pretty much what I'm doing now is getting rid of that extra space. There's still some space. I think it's from the row right below. So let me just get rid of this here at the top as well. I'll hit save. The last thing that I want to show you is how to change the color of this right here. So that is a grading that's very, very interactive. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my Notion doc and I have this tutorial that is how to add grading overlay to text. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to copy this code in step one, go back here, open the custom CSS window, paste it here. And the name that I've given it is cool header. So I'll hit save. I'll click the text where I want to add the effect to go to advanced and then I'll do cool header one enter. Now you see that the text is transparent, but when you preview the website, I'll show you what that looks like. You can see that the effect now works very cool, very clean. If you're going after the creative industry or the creative niche, this is going to be something that is very, very cool. And just another tool to add to your web design skills. If you want to get my notion doc that has all of the training, all of the resources that I use for this video and other past videos, click the link in the description, get your own copy. But with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.